it's often just a case of bad methodology. Sometimes we know from the checkered history of parapsychology it's been outright fraud. Um, but I think that's on that's actually not generally the case. I think these experimenters are so wedded to the idea that there must exist a world of laws and of beyond the physics that, that the world is a bigger place than described by uh, scientific materialism that they are prepared to, um, to to fix things almost unconsciously in ways which support their theories um, on the, but quite innocently. Um, uh, Rupert Sheldrake is a fairly good friend of mine. I think Rupert is, does believe in his, in his results. We've talked often about what the methodological problems might be but it's clear that in the end, Rupert begins from believing that these effects are out there. Telepathy exists, uh, mind reading exists, and so on. Um, and it's up to him to discover them, rather than coming from my point of view or yours, which would be to say, well, uh, I suppose there's an outside possibility that these phenomena might exist. Let's design experiments which would, which would then prove the case if it's so. Mm -hmm. um, what about the implausibility of the well, the lack of any physical theory of it. I mean, I, I've, I've always felt that, that um, uh, although it's possible that there's some completely brand new physical force out there that nobody's discovered, and when they do discover it, I suppose it's possible that something like a telepathy experiment might be the, the key that, um, that, gi that gives it to, to us. No, I think it's a, really, it's a serious problem, that it's entirely untheoretical. There's no, there's no, no one's even got an inkling for what the nature of these paranormal forces would be. Um, I'm a, I've actually... I've made an argument that the current laws of physics, the ones we do know are, are real and strong, actually prevent uh, uh, even the possibility of oh, non-logical grounds yeah. uh, because of in problems about information transmission and so on for some of the claims made by the parapsychologists. But, um, you know, I th we, it's... There's not a lot, you know, not a lot of people are doing this. I th um, the phenomena would be so exciting if they were demonstrated to be true. Well, quite. I mean, they'd be so exciting for physics, apart from anything yes, else. You, you get. I keep telling people like that. Why don't you go for the Nobel Prize for mm. physics? Because you certainly get it if you showed something as as amazing yes. as transfer of information yeah, from one brain to another across a distance. But see, quite apart from the uh, the scientific evidence not standing up, the evidence in everyday life shows that it doesn't stand yes, up. Yeah. I mean. People claim that they're continually having paranormal experiences and so on, and that's the reason why they believe there's such wide... And it's, the, the, the people across the world you know, have these folk beliefs in the paranormal. But actually, if we believed in the paranormal, we should, we should be astonished about the fact that, these, that it doesn't work. I mean, let's take an example. I mean, standard telepathy test. You're asked to guess a card which you can't see, all right? Go to an optometrist and read down his list of yeah. letters yeah. and get to the bottom yeah. line yeah. and you can't see. Well, if you could get it by telepathy, <laughs> yeah, no, you'd yes. be getting it every time. Nick, do you think there's some sort of psychological hunger, almost evolutionary programming, to believe in the paranormal? There's certainly a hunger to believe in something over and above the material universe, which gives us a sense of being part of a cosmos, which actually could exist outside the laws of physics and, and chemistry, which seem, you know, and not only seem, but actually are rather dispiriting. I mean, the idea that we are just matter destined to live a short life on, on Earth with no purpose behind it and nothing left behind us except, you know, the memories in our, of, 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 of an inadequate uh, 70 years on Earth. That's not good enough. Um, you know, we aspire to be much bigger than that. And I think it's even possible that natural selection has has, 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 has uh, fixed our brain up to some, our mind, I should say, to entertain these uh, delusions of grandeur that we actually do have an immortal soul, a soul which can perhaps communicate even in this life um, with other souls at, at, at great distances beyond the, you know, without using ordinary communication What would be channels. the survival penalty? I can see why it's nice, but what would be the survival penalty of not believing in that? Because, because self-importance is an amazingly adaptive trait. It makes us reach out to projects to take ourselves seriously, to think we can do things which we otherwise wouldn't even imagine. Maybe even could. improves our health. Right. It, I'm sure it improves our yeah. health. Dan Dennett's argued that actually it's, it's in the, religion in, inspires uh, belief in which doctors who then accept the placebo effect on mm. us, for example. Um, but I think, I mean, while I think there's nothing in these paranormal beliefs, I would argues very strongly that nonetheless they serve people quite well or at least they have done traditionally belief that we are made of 
solar stuff is a very empowering belief. It's inevitable, I think, and really and we, anyone could have predicted that when 19th century science started cranking in and trying to investigate everything according to you know, Baconian methods, that people would start investigating the powers of the soul in, in scientific ways. Um, and what we saw with the development of parapsychology was the kind of attempt to, to bring all this done into the scientific fold again, to bring non-science into the, into the realm of science. Um, it failed. Um, but it remains immensely attractive. Uh, people want to hear about this stuff and people will give their lives to doing, investigating it. In some ways though, I think it's got the same relation to real science of mind that let's say um, pornography has to sex. Yes. Um, we you know, we are, are, are set up by nature to, to love this sort of stuff and to be impressed by coincidences and to wonder what our dreams mean and to hope and believe that something of us survives death and so on. Then along come these parapsychologists to push all the same buttons and in fact often feed us uh, nonsense, sometimes uh, uh, things which are well known to be nonsense by self-important people who know that they can get an audience for it. And get money. And get money, yes. Mm. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs>